This kid made over $1 million in one year with a business idea that nobody's talking about. AI generated books. He's making a living selling thousands of eBooks using an unconventional method with ChatGPT. Initially, this wasn't the way I did it, but this is the best way to do it now. How interesting. So basically he uses AI or ChatGPT to generate eBooks, which he then sells to middle-aged women. But the process he has is extremely manual. It takes like a couple hours. So what we're gonna do is automate the entire process and more. What I mean is that with a single click, we get a high quality ebook either for reading or resale and we're gonna make millions in the process. Let's head right in. So first we need to make ebooks to sell and let's try it with plain ChatGPT first. Let's ask it to give us a full 30 page ebook about losing weight for middle aged women. And it says that it can't because it's too complex. And also there's around a 4,000 word limit for ChatGPT. So what this dude tells people to do in his paid course is first ask ChatGPT to make an outline of the book, which ChatGPT can do just fine. Then we ask ChatGPT to write each small subsection of the book. And then when it's done, we copy and paste it into a Word document. We repeat this for each subsection, design a cover for it. And the last thing to do is to turn it into a PDF and then after that, you have an ebook that's ready to sell. And it actually would probably sell pretty well. And yeah, remember that these books are for middle-aged women. So the topics would be like how to be healthier, how to lose weight, and how to save a marriage. So the problem is that this process is extremely manual and tedious. It takes like a couple hours to do just to make one ebook. So let's make this book better and also just automate the entire process. So it takes a few minutes and no human work with coding. So there's a couple levels to automation. The first one is physical human imitation. This is like a robot that would be typing into a keyboard, imitating a human in the physical world. And yeah, this is just overkill for our project and not that efficient. Then there's digital human imitation. When you use a mouse or a keyboard, they send signals to your computer. So we can just write code that would be emulating these signals. But the problem is that all the responses we get are still stuck on this website. This is not that good because then it's really hard to do anything with this data. So what's even better is using something called APIs or application programming interfaces. First, what actually happens when we're using the ChatGPT website? Well, what we're using is something called the front end website or the user interface. And it takes what we type in and sends it to what's called the back end API. Then all the logic happens on the back end, and then the back end responds with the answer to the front end, which is what we see. So what we can do is write a program that talks to this backend API directly, and then we don't need to go through this front end at all. Here we have some code that does this, and let's try it out. Let's just say hi and see what we get back. And yeah, it works. We get pretty much the same response as if we did it on the website, because the website more or less uses the same API. But now this response is in our code rather than the website, which we can do a lot more with. So now let's ask ChatGPT for an outline of the book with chapters and subchapters. And we get back an outline of the book. However, it's in a form that humans are meant to read and the computer isn't gonna understand this. So what can we do? If you think about it, humans process the information as a language like English in this case. And in code, information is processed as data, which is in data structures. So what we should do is ask ChatGPT to give us the response as a data structure so our code can continue doing stuff on it. For example, for each subsection, we can ask ChatGPT, please write me the full text content for this subsection. We'll get back the full contents of it and then just keep looping through the other subsections. Eventually, we'll have the full contents of the ebook in less than a minute. Yes. At this point, you might be thinking, we have the contents of the book, so now surely someone has to just copy paste all this into a Word document and then format it to make it look nice. But by now, you guys should know that with coding, you can do anything. We can use another API to let us turn our text content into a Word file and then into a nice looking PDF. And now for the last part, which is generating a cover for the textbook. But wait, we actually have some good news. This time we have a sponsor. We've been grinding a long time for this. And honestly, I didn't think it was possible after making an AI OnlyFans, but somehow it happened. Let's take a look. Do you guys want to learn more about coding? Well, do I have something for you? It's called Brilliant, the best way to learn math, data science, and computer science interactively. Jesse, what the f are you talking about? 
Brilliant is fun and interactive with thousands of lessons in beginner to advanced topics in AI, coding, math, physics, anything that you would want with new lessons being added every month. I've actually had the chance to use it myself. And honestly, guys, it's actually really good, especially for the coding part. Whatever your skill level, Brilliant customizes the content to fit your needs and lets you solve at your own pace. When you get started, you can take a quick quiz to gauge your level. So for coding, for example, there's some beginner topics as well as some advanced topics that will be suited to whatever your skill level is. Specifically, there's a course called Thinking in Code, and it gets you designing simple programs to solve real world problems, kind of like we do in this channel. If you use the link brilliant.org slash Nang, you get 30 days for free. And if you're one of the first 200 people to sign up, you get 20% off the annual plan. Okay, check it out. Now back to the video. All right, so for the cover, there's some image generation models like Dolly 3, but when we try it out to make a book cover, the words are almost always messed up. So we're gonna have to do something else. What we can do is have templates for each type of book and then attach related words or tags to each of these templates. Then when we have to write a book, if the title of the book contains any of these words, then we should use that template. And this is all right, but the accuracy of the templates chosen is actually just terrible because sometimes the words don't match exactly. So let's try to improve this. Right now, this is just rule-based code logic. And I guess before AI, what we could do instead is to just hire someone to look at the title of the book and then all the tags of the templates and then use their brain to choose the most appropriate template. And it probably would be pretty good, but this is a really simple task and AI can do it. So what we can do is use AI as code logic, which is actually a pretty big idea. But what we can do is supply the AI, or ChatGPT in this case, with the same information that we would give the human. It'll then give us back the template with really high accuracy, and our code can insert the title into this template. And yeah, now we have a cover that actually looks pretty good, and we're finally able to go from a topic and a target audience all the way to a full sellable ebook that costs less than 10 cents to make. And that is just indubitably incredible. So now let's generate some and sell them with Facebook and Pinterest ads. And yeah, we made a bit of money, which was actually really nice. But guys, we need to think bigger. During the, uh, the gold rush, right? The average person that was digging for gold wasn't making that much money. But the people that were making all the money were the people selling these shovels. So if we provide this as a service for everybody selling these eBooks, then we wouldn't have to do all the ad stuff. And um, yeah, we could probably make more money. Okay, so we have the code that's able to generate eBooks on our computer and we wanna make it a platform so anyone can use it. Making this is not gonna be that different than how the apps you use on the internet get made, like Instagram, for example. It's like our code is the internal parts of a car, like there's the engine, the gasoline tank, and the carburetor. But all the driver wants to do is just press the gas pedal and know that the car is gonna move forward. Also, the car manufacturer doesn't want everybody to know how the internals work because it's their secret. This concept is called abstraction, and pretty much we want to package our code similar to a car, and that's what an API does. Then frontends can just message this API to generate an ebook and the backend will do it. So how exactly do we do this in our code? Well, there's a lot of web frameworks that help with this. Like in Python, there's Flask, Django, and Fast API. And if you're choosing which one is the best to use, my advice is that it actually just does not matter at all. Your final product will work regardless of which one you choose. So for our project, let's just go with the most simple one, which is gonna be Flask. One last thing is that we need to run this backend server on the cloud, which just means that we're gonna use one of the big companies' computers in like Virginia or something that's running 24 seven. And yeah, now our backend code is packaged like a car, except it's on the internet and frontends can ask it to generate eBooks. So let's quickly make a frontend app. And now our project's kind of like the ChatGPT app in the beginning. This frontend is just communicating with our backend API. And yeah, hopefully that makes sense. This is also how apps you use like Facebook or Instagram are set up, which is why their desktop website, mobile website, and app all pretty much work in the same way. It's because they're all different front ends accessing the same backend API. Okay, so we have the platform here and let's see how it works. You guys can actually use this right now at aiebooks.xyz, but pretty much we just give it a topic and a target audience, and then we can see a five page preview. If it's good, we can pay a dollar 
and within a few minutes, we have a fully polished, over 30 page ebook that's ready to sell. Amazing. So now let's just blast Facebook ads for this. And also we can make some UGC. I pretty much just copied all of these successful ads that are kind of like this. There's a new way to make passive income with AI and no one's talking about it. The idea is selling AI generated eBooks to niche target audiences like middle-aged moms. Here's exactly how we're going to do it. Step one, head over to AIebooks.xyz slash sell. This will let us generate a high quality eBook in less than a minute. And just like that, we have money rolling in. But uh, midway through this project, I changed my mind. Yes, a twist. And yeah, I'll be a little bit serious for this part. Pretty much, I went to Italy and I was just on this street with a bunch of luxury stores. And I was just watching these scammers on the street. What they would do is pretty much put bracelets on people and then just make them pay for it. And yeah, it's just a scam. And so I was thinking, like they were making a decent amount of money but it was insignificant compared to what the people shopping at these luxury stores were making, and they're probably not scamming. And then I was thinking, what we're doing right now is not that different from this. We're just capitalizing on middle-aged women's insecurities instead of doing something actually useful. And also with people like this on the internet, it's actually just so stupid because, well, for one, they're not doing as good as they say because if they did, then they wouldn't be needing to sell a course that doesn't teach any real skills. But anyways, on the other hand, if you know coding, then you can actually do stuff that's useful. So now I think that our time is probably just better spent trying to do that instead of chasing small amounts of money. So I thought about it for a week, and here's the new plan. We're gonna use what we have so far, but instead, we're gonna make AI-generated textbooks for K-12 schools. I actually think this is not that bad of an idea because if you think about it, it would make textbooks cheaper for low-income schools and could make learning more engaging through customization. Like, if a third grader likes dinosaurs, then their math problems can have dinosaurs in them. Okay, so I'm sold. And I actually think that we should make this into a startup. So let's try to get funding through a VC. Specifically, let's try Y Combinator. And oh god, oh shit. We're two months past the late deadline. But somehow, the application is still open. I was gonna ask Gary Tan, the CEO of YC, for a referral. But unfortunately, he was only free Wednesday nights, which is when me and my friend play anime girl Mahjong. So we're on our own, but let's just grind out an application and apply. And in the meantime, while we're waiting, we can actually make this useful for people that want to learn from reading ebooks by making another front end for this. I actually wanted to learn some stuff like the history of the Rothschild family and also just about quantum competing. So I generated ebooks for them and they were actually really interesting. And oh shit, YC got back to us. Let's take a look. Oh. So we didn't get in, but it's all right because, you know, maybe this could be a blessing in disguise. Like, they would just take a lot of equity rights. And also, it's not even that big of a deal being in YC. Like, you could do this on your own. Maybe another VC would be better for this, or maybe no VC at all would be the best. <clears throat> but for real, I'll talk about this later on. And that pretty much brings us to the end of this video. A couple updates. I spent like three months coding this platform. And so that's why there wasn't a video for a while, but I actually streamed most of this weekly on twitch.tv. So you guys can follow me there. It's at not Nang. Also, please support the channel by going to nangshop.com. There's new shirts there and also just other merch. So yeah, please check it out. Also, last thing, thank you to Junyun for the animations. He actually has a channel himself and it's really good. So you guys should check it out. Okay, let's talk about some future plans now. Okay, so first for the ebook startup stuff. Honestly, when I was writing the application, the total addressable market was not looking very good. So I really don't blame them for rejecting me. I do think that there's a lot of issues when it comes to trying to do a startup in the public sector space, especially when it comes to education. I think it was a good attempt, but we should move on. So in terms of life and YouTube stuff, I mean, I really like making YouTube videos, but as you guys probably already know, my dream is to unironically become the next Elon Musk. And so on YouTube, I've been doing like these small projects, right? But I do think now's a good time to start doing something bigger or like an actual startup. Pretty much I've been preparing my entire life to do a startup and try to be successful in it. But yeah, pretty much for the future, I do think that the YouTube videos are going to change it's pretty much not gonna be like this project style anymore. It's probably going to be about the startup that I am making. But anyways, at the end of these videos, you guys know that I try to inspire all of you 
as well as myself. It could be a bit cringe, but it's all good. I think it's net positive. But anyways, recently my friend was asking me like how to be motivated um, because he's also working at a quant firm as a coder. And he's like, oh, we're making like top 0.1% of the salary of people our age. And so like, we made it. There's no motivation needed, or like there's no source of motivation after that. But I will say that it's pretty much relative to kind of where you started. And so like for me, sure, it's a really nice job. However, the circumstances that I was born in is like 0.01% of people. Like I wasn't crazy rich or anything, but I was born in Silicon Valley, the actual tech center of the entire world, like my friend. So it's only natural. Like all I did was kind of follow the like straight path. But this, if anything, that's like not really overachieving or underachieving, it's kind of just standard. Of course, like you can't be OD on this, like you gotta just be content at all times, which I do think meditation is really good for. However, for my personal ambition, I do want to improve relative to the circumstances I was born in. And so what I see is that a lot of people with the same circumstances as me, like in high school, would just spend all their time playing video games and stuff because they have a comfortable life, like they have a house and stuff. But I think for me, like if I take that route, well, one, I think it's selfish because you're kind of just taking advantage of the stuff that you were born into. But also I think like you're in the position where you have education and resources to actually do something important in the world. So I feel like you could do something with that if you wanted to. And I mean, yeah, I definitely want to. It's kind of just all I think about whether that's for better or for worse. But yeah, hopefully that makes sense moving forward. I am going to try to do a startup and hopefully can make videos about it. And yeah, this whole last part, just take it with a grain of salt. It's really just not that deep. But thank you guys for watching and supporting the channel. A lot of you guys have been here for a long time. So I feel like we're in this together. That's about it. Peace.